Hello, and this is Joe Chambers from Chambers Custom and 1911 University bringing you another mathematical review. This time we're looking at a gun that we call the Lost Socket. And here's how it looks right there, so you can see it. This is a 10 millimeter from a popular mass production company known as RIA. You know we normally don't talk about the names of companies but on the mass produced guns I don't mind so much. Um, Rock Island Armory is a company that builds production guns and they do a pretty darn good job of it to be honest with you. So before we get into it let me give you my caveat as always this is a sample of one from this company. The numbers may or may not be indicative of what they normally produce. I don't know because I haven't seen all the guns that they've normally produced, but it's a sample of one. And so we took the measurements of it and uh, uh, see, how, see how it measures up, see if it cuts the mustard. With that, let's get into it. Remember, math don't lie. 3.14 is always pi. All right, so this is a government model 10 millimeter carbon steel blued gun. It's got uh, adjustable Novak style sights, fiber optic front sight on it there. Um, it's actually blended fairly well. It's got a wedge lock style bull barrel full length guide rod, ambi thumb safeties, um, some G10, they may even be VZ grips, I don't know. If they're not, they're a copy of them. Uh, it's got a magwell that slips on over the frame, which I'm not a super big fan of, but hey, if it works for you, it works for you. At least it's nicely blended on the inside. It's got a skeletonized trigger that's very loose. Um, yeah, that's, that's basically the gun. And it's uh, general, general appearance, you know, GI cock serrations and all that jazz. Just a nice base, just a nice base model single stack in 10 millimeter. All right, here's the math. The barrel OD, remember it's a wedge lock gun now, so it's a little different than a cone barrel or a, or a bushing barrel. But the barrel OD is 69760. The slide ID is 7014 for a difference of .0038. It does have lockup up front. This gun only has 150 rounds through it, but it does have lockup up front. I checked that and it, it Currently, it, it fits good up front with the way it wedges into place. Barrel hood to breech face gap is four thousandths, 0 .004. Chamber depth on this is 995. We normally cut our 10 millimeters to 0.992, so it's right there within spec. It's not over-throated, which is great. It's a ramped barrel, and the ramp isn't, isn't cut too far forward. It's nicely done. Slide stop pinhole in the frame is 0 .200, and the slide stop pin diameter is 0 .198 for a difference of two thousandths, 0 .002, perfectly in spec. The extractor length is 2.246, which is right there on the numbers. Uh, there's zero fore and aft play with the extractor in the slide. Now that might be part and partial to the fact that they use an extra power uh, firing pin, but I couldn't get it to move with or without the firing pin in place. The extractor appears to be hand fit and the hook of the extractor is perfectly fit just like very similar to what we do here at Chambers Custom. The hook doesn't touch the case. The only thing I didn't like about the extractor fit is for me personally the tension is a little bit light for a 10 millimeter. I would like to see a little bit more tension but it had tension and the hook was fit perfectly. Well done Rock Island. Uh, ejector length is one inch. Um, you know, it's a longer case, so you can go with a little shorter ejector. It's still an extended ejector. It's not a GI, but it's not quite 1.08. Barrel fit, uh, I was actually stunned. Not going to lie to you guys. Uh, there was 20% leg fit approximately on both legs. It was very even. There was no barrel bump. Um, you know, for a gun that costs well less than $1,000, that's really impressive. The barrel leg height, well, let's see, the slide stop hole in the link is 209, right within specs. The barrel leg height is 111 on each leg. 
link bridge thickness was 108 so a difference of three thousandths again right there in the in the spec that we want to see the gun has no barrel bump because the link is fit properly um, slide now this is where it gets a little hinky the slide to frame fit is pretty loose I'm not gonna lie remember the last one we did the slide to frame fit was pretty decent this one's pretty loose um, slideway width is 755 frame rail width is 751 for a difference of four thousandths slide way height is 108 frame rail height varies just a little bit it's uh, 100 and a half point one zero zero five to point one zero one five so a little bit of variation there you know these are mass-produced guns I don't expect it to be perfectly perfectly straight every time that's a difference of six and a half to seven and a half thousandths up and down in that measurement and then the slide rail height was 0.115 and the frame way height was 0.1215 for a difference of six there so um, yeah it's pretty loose I mean you can hear it it is what it is you know it's a it's a sub thousand dollar pistol and it has barrel fit okay so Frame vertical impact surface is 0.596. Barrel viz measures 0.575 for a difference of 21 thousandths. That's a lot. Not going to lie. That's a lot. Because of the way they cut the frame and how everything works out, I did check it. And the barrel is stopping on the viz. So they worked the math out similar to how Staccato has worked the math out to allow that. They're letting the barrel drop further down so that it can go further back and, and all that's good. Um, so you get, you get your contact. Trigger parts. The trigger pull measures a smooth five plus pounds on NRA certified scales. It's a bone stock gun, people. You didn't expect it to have a match grade trigger, did you? No, of course not. Disco is uh, unmodified drop-in part at 1.3. Sear appears to be an unmodified drop-in part at 774.774. Both of those are fine. Hammer hooks uh, are also unmodified, and the hammer is drop-in, and it measures, uh, the hammer hooks measure 19 thousandths, 0 0.019. The trigger is really loose in the frame which is typical of these guns. So that does, that does make the trigger feel a little mushy. But overall, really happy with the gun. Uh, for, for the price range, I mean, if you're wanting a 10 millimeter blaster just to get and have fun with and maybe shoot some hogs or a deer with, this is probably not a bad way to go if you don't want to spend a pile of money and have one hand built uh, by, a by a shop like ours. Yeah, so that's it, the lost socket. The Rock Island 10 millimeter. I think it's a good gun for the money. If I didn't already have a 10 millimeter and I was wanting one on the cheap, I would I would most definitely be considering this gun. I'm Joe Chambers with Chambers Custom and 1911 University. Thank you for watching this mathematical review. And remember, math don't lie. 3.14 is always pie.